Welcome to this video on creating a common code class. My name's Andy Wicks and at this point you're probably wondering why do I need a common code class? Let me explain. Good programmers are lazy. Lazy programmers want to find the easy way to get their code to work quickly. They don't want to have to do too much remembering. They just want to be able to get on with the job. And creating a common code class is an excellent way of doing that. What you do is you create a class that contains all those snippets of code, all those pieces of information that you need in lots of the programs that you write. You create this class once and only once and then you can add to it whenever you want and you can use it in any project that you feel you need it. So let me explain how to create it. I'm using NetBeans 8.1 but the principle will hold true in whichever IDE and whichever programming language you choose to use. Here I'm going to right click on the directory in which I want this new common code class to live. I choose new Java class and then I can call it common code and that will create a new blank class for me into which I can put all these wonderful things. So let's get going and get into how to create stuff that is really quite useful. Well, the first thing we're going to need to do is to create a, something called a constructor. A constructor is a piece of code, a method, that will allow you to do tasks that need to be performed when, the, when this particular class is first instantiated. I'm going to add a blank line because I need to add some other stuff above it later on. But I'm going to have common code with brackets, mind you it would probably help not to have the space, with the brackets and I'm going to make that into a method. Now as you can see this method doesn't contain anything at the moment, but it will. So let's put some stuff in there. A lot of my programs need the date and time. So I'm going to put that in into common code. Java doesn't have a date or a time type. So we have to create our own. And this code here allows us to do that. Let me explain the bits. The first line here says it's private static final string. So it's private. It can't be seen outside of this class. Static. It will only be created once. And final means this is the end of the line for it. It will never change. String, well, that's its data type. And this is a particular string called UK date format now that is a constant. It will always look like DD hyphen MM hyphen YY and so on. That's how dates are set up in the UK. But if you're watching this video somewhere else, you create that string in your particular format. Next, I know I'm going to need a variable called UK date and time. So I create that as a private string. But that's not static and it's not final. I certainly want to be able to change that, but only within the program. And now I've added a particular method. The method is public. That means it can be seen from outside this class. This method returns a string. And that string is going to come from this method, get date and time. Now, in this method, I've got a few commands. Calendar is needed to create a particular type of variable. In this case, I'm going to call that variable cal. We also need a simple date format type. So UK simple date format is the variable. And this new variable type 
can, takes the date format from the date format I set up up at the top. Then I'm going to put something into the variable UK date and time. And that's what goes in in this third line here. Finally, I'm going to return that date and time to the user. So the user will be able to call this method and get the date and time just like that. The next task is a little more complicated. I have some code in the program that I was writing that I really want to be able to reuse time and again. I've got two particular methods here that create a menu item and a navigation button on menu bars and button bars. And these are general methods. They're not specific and it'd be nice to be able to use them over and over again. So all I have to do is write a single line of code and I've got all the menu items and navigation buttons that I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut and paste these from the original program. But when I cut these out and paste them into my new class, so Control and X, then go to Common Code and put those in here, I've got a few difficulties. Well, the first thing is that, as usual, I need to create all the imports. That's fairly easy. I just click the OK button and those are seen to. I now have the imports. I now have the imports that I need. But there are other problems. You see, there are errors in the code now. Errors that weren't there when they were in the original program. And those have to do with using the keyword this. This refers to the current class. And I don't want it to refer to the current class. What I really want is for it to refer to the class that's calling it. And for that, I need to make a few changes. So let's go make those changes. Common code needs to understand which class called it. And for that, I'm going to have to add a little bit of code. The first thing I'm going to do is to create a new variable called call by, which is of type object. Object can hold anything. In this case, it's holding the name of the class that is using this common code module. So when common code is created, it's going to recognize which class called it. And it's going to put that into a variable called call. Call is then being put into called by so that it's available anywhere within our program. And we want to be able to use that variable just a bit further down. So let's go down to that code. Here we have the two this statements. This refers to the current class. And we don't want it to refer to the current class. We want it to refer to the class that called common code. So this just gets replaced with called by. But called by is of the wrong type. So now we've got to add in a little bit of magic. What we're going to do is cast this particular called by into a variable type called action listener. Action listener is a, a type that hasn't been declared yet. So I'm going to make sure that it has its import. And when it has its import, look, the error disappears. We can now copy and paste this code to the other this. So control C and 
control V and our common code module will now work. But, and there's always a but, unfortunately the work isn't done yet. What I'm going to do is save this because saving is always a good idea and I'm going to go back to my original program. My original program now has some errors in it. Those errors have been generated because I've taken away the method definitions that allowed them to work. So let's now step into making those work and it's quite easy. I'm now back in my original program. The first thing I'm going to do is a bit of housekeeping. Because I've cut various bits of code out from the original program, I now have imports that I don't need. So I'm going to remove unused imports. And that's just a bit of housekeeping. The next thing I'm going to do is to add a line right at the top that allows me to use the common code class. For that I'm going to type in common code because that's what I want it to be called. I'm going to call the variable CC, short for common cold. Now we don't want a common cold, common code, that's better. And that's going to be a new common code that refers to this particular class. We now have a variable CC that refers to common code and common code will know which class is calling it because we've called the this variable in there. So let's go down to those errors that we had. Well, correcting those is going to be really easy. I'm referring to make menu item, which now lives in common code. So I just type in cc dot, and there it is. All done. And I do that for each of the ones that is shown as an error. By the way, it's easiest if you do these in reverse order because the boxes don't cover your later code. So that's the ones in the menu item bit. Now let's go to the make navigation button and this time I'll do it the right way round. I'll start from the bottom and work up. And now our code is working completely. What we've got is a common code class that contains all sorts of useful things. We can add other bits of code. And if you're one of my students, we'll be adding quite a few bits of code into there. But this may seem like an awful lot of effort for very little return. After all, the program was working before so why hack it about and then change it? Well, because we want to be able to use menu item and button, navigation button bar in lots of other different programs. We want to be able to add dates in lots of other programs. And now all we need to do is do what we did in that final step. Just create a common code variable, tell it to use this, and away we go. We can just make but menu items and button items as we want them. And that's lazy. That's good. But of course you don't believe me that this works. If I was one of my people, I wouldn't believe me either. So let's now run this and see whether we get what we expect. And here it is. Exactly the way that we expect it to be. Thank you for watching. Bye.